Hi, welcome to Channel Blano. Um, so this is going to be a separate series that will be covering some of the great war crimes committed during World War II, and there was a lot. Um, we're all familiar with the horrific acts committed by the Germans, by the Nazis, and we should be, I hope you are. But in this series, I will be initially just covering over the Japanese war crimes. Now, this video began as an idea in which I would be just looking at... I, as a result, of seeing some weird discourse, in my opinion, that seems to make the Japanese out as victims of World War II. They are not. The Japanese government, the Japanese empire, has committed some of the hugest and most horrific atrocities in human history, and I am of the opinion that not enough people know about this. The Japanese government themselves haven't really fully acknowledged the crimes to the extent that the Germans have. And so this series will be diving into the war crimes committed by the Japanese during World War II. Now to start with, I will be just talking about, well, Japanese war crimes. Uh, the video was originally meant to be one video, but the more research I did, the more I wrote this essay, the more I learned. I and the more I realized that this wasn't just going to be one video, it was going to be a whole series because there's so much that they did. So just to kick things off, there will be content warnings throughout this whole series. There are going to be some very graphic and disturbing things that occurred. But I think this is important as we don't know about this when this stuff is likely to occur again. Um, so... Thankfully, in this first video, it won't be as graphic as some of the others. This will be more talking about the background, the cause and effect, what led to Japan, the Japanese Empire, and caused them to commit this great acts of crime during World War II. So we'll just be talking about the background. So to start with, World War II was a cataclysmic event. We all know that. It was the most horrific war in human history, and 1% of the world's population died during the course of it. Most people are well aware of the Axis and Allied powers, with Japan and Germany being the two biggest enemies of the war. In the European and Pacific theatres within the Western world, the horrors committed by Nazi Germany are well documented. The Holocaust is one of the most evil events to have ever occurred. An industrial scale factory murder on a level of genocide that makes it a unique evil amongst the evils committed by humanity through history. Rightfully, Nazi Germany is viewed as the ultimate evil in the West, and Hitler himself is viewed as the definition of evil, with an argument to be made that Hitler himself has become a bigger representation of evil than, well, the devil. Nazi imagery has inspired the ultimate evils across Western media and culture since World War II. Star Wars, for example, the Empire is straight up just space Nazis. Harry Potter, Voldemort, Hitler. Um, they're just a couple of examples that came to mind. But the other big enemy of World War II was the Imperial Empire of Japan. There is a view amongst many that they were the lesser evil, or even the victims themselves. There's a strange discourse where people see that, mainly attributing due to Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and they were tragic, horrible what occurred. Although I made a, a video where I believe that they were a necessary evil, and I'll link it here for you guys. However, unlike the Germans, the Japanese have never truly repented for the sins of World War II, which is still a cause of friction between Japan and other Asian popular Pacific countries to this day. And so the atrocities committed by Japan should not be overlooked. The evils com committed by the Japanese are equal and even usurped the Nazis at point. And we will be examining some of those evils. Often called the Asian Holocaust, the Japanese perpetrated numerous war crimes and crimes against humanity that resulted in the deaths of millions of people and, for and with forced labor, human experimentation, massacres, sexual slavery, directly perpetrated or even condoned by the Japanese military and governments. Let's dive into the background. The roots of Japan's imperial ambitions date back to almost a century before the outbreak of World War II, during the Edo period. Between 1603 and 1868, Japan had been an isolationist country, under the policy of Sakuku, 
I was never good at Japanese, trust me. I So my high school Japanese, don't expect good pronunciation by me. So during this period, trade between foreign countries was severely limited and foreign nationals were hard from entering the country, with the exception of the Dutch to a limited extent. The Japanese people themselves were severely limited from leaving Japan, but this would change through, though, in 1853, when Commodore Matthew Perry arrived in Japan and forced the country to open up for trade. In 1854, Japan signed the Treaty of Kanagawa with the US. The treaty allowed American ships to refuel and resupply in Japanese docks and would mark the beginning of the end of Japan's isolationism. The Treaty of Kan... Kan Nagawa was just the first of many unequal treaties that the Japanese were forced to sign in this period. They would enter in unequal treaties in the following years with the British, French, and the Russians. And these powers were granted economic privileges. These treaties severely undermined Japan's national sovereignty and exposed weakness in the traditional feudal system. Japan looked around the world, and they saw that the globe was getting colonized by Europeans. West was the dominant power, they had, and Japan realized that in order to prevent themselves from being themselves becoming a colonized state, they would have to modernize. And in the 1880s, several Japanese missions were sent abroad to learn about Western civilization, which would cultivate in the Meiji Restoration of 1868. The Meiji Restoration saw a drastic shift in Japanese political and social structure that would see the abolition of the samurai class and Emperor Meiji assuming power. Japan would embark on a series of modernization policies and took inspiration heavily from the British Empire. Japan's monarchical system became a constitutional monarchy. There was a creation of a centralized bureaucratic system, adoption of modern legal systems, and the development of a national education system. Japan would also begin its process of an industrialization. That saw them embrace the industrial revolution. They would see them embrace the industrial revolution, and Japan would modernize its military force, adopting Western weapons, military tactics, and organizational structures. Japan was inspired by the great European powers and wished to create their own. In 1876, Japan, using the same gunboat diplomacy which had been used against them, well, they turned this to Korea, and they forced Korea into signing. Japan Korean Treaty of 1876, which granted extraterritorial rights to the Japanese citizens and opened up three Korean ports to Japanese trade. Japan was now building their own imperial empire. Japan influence in Korea only increased from there, which would lead to conflict between Russia and Japan in the Russo Japanese War. This was a conflict of control of Korea and parts of Manchuria between the Russian Empire and the Empire of Japan. And the Japanese ultimately won, which proved a great shock, as this was the first time a European power had lost to an Asiatic one, and really established Japan's stature as a great pair coming into the 20th century. And by 1910, Korea was fully annexed by the Japanese. World War I saw Japan join the war as it seek to annex German territory in the region, and after the war, Japan was granted this territory, and gained a permanent seat on the Council of the League of Nations. At the Paris Peace Conference, while it further confirmed the transfer of Japan of Germany's rights in Shandong. Similarly, Japan's more northerly Pacific Islands came under the Japanese mandate, called the South Seas Mandate. Japan in the 1920s would see a brief flirt with democracy through the Taisho era. But with increasing uncertainty, increasing trade barriers, and many in Japan thinking that they weren't being treated equal by the European powers, as they felt they deserved more after the war, and ultimately the Great Depression hitting Japan, well, a new wave of radicalism sweep the nation, jingoistic Japanese patriotism took over. The Great Depression's impact, coupled with assertive military who wanted to seek territorial expansion to weaken the democratic institutions at Japan, which were fragile to begin with. As these nationalistic, fascist, authoritarian ideologies gained prominence, the civilian government weakened. Military's power only increased, and through political assassinations and suppression of dissent, well, it only further eroded Japan's weak 
democracy. The imperial rescriptive education fostered in militaristic values or weak political parties failed to address the challenges that were faced. By 1932, Japan's bloat with democracy was over. But only the year prior, in September 31, the Japanese invaded Manchuria and saw the subsequent creation of a client state, Manchuko, of Puyi. Yes, that Puyi, the, you know, the last emperor of China, installed as the puppet state for Manchuko, as the chief of the state. China protested to the League of Nations, but Japan would withdraw from the League of Nations, and in 1937, Japan would invade China proper, following the Marco Polo Prince incidents, beginning a violent campaign of war, destruction, and chaos that would last until 1945. Known in some circles as the Asian Holocaust, between 1937 and 1945, estimates range that the Japanese military murdered from 3 million to as high as 30 million people, most were Chinese. But there would also be significant deaths amongst the population of Filipinos, Vietnamese, Koreans, Indians, Indonesians, Thai, Malaysians, amongst others, including Europeans, American, and Australian prisoners of war. Japan's brutality was only getting started. In the next video, I'll be discussing the rape of Nanjing. Horrifying topic.